on Sunrise breaking news. Minnesota lawmakers have until midnight to pass a budget or the government shuts down. They passed big bills overnight, but their work is far from over. Grab the shades, plus make those outdoor plans. I'm tracking a spectacular afternoon with high temperatures on the warmer side. Parents, if your kids got any financial assistance, they could get even more money before the fall semester. We tell you how. The NFL is saying football is gay. The new message coming out from the league and the viral video now getting mixed reviews online. And their viral videos show us Minnesota landmarks like we've never seen them before. We talked with the video's drone master about how they pulled off these epic shots. It's Wednesday, June 30th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Hey, Sunrisers, the 4th of July is just days away and some of our big local shows are ending up duds thanks to a massive fireworks shortage. Is a shortage of bottle rockets and artillery shells affecting your fourth party too? Let us know this morning using the hashtag Sunrisers. Well, a lot of people like those uh, firecrackers for Love 4th of July. Yeah. yeah. Love the really long sparklers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Because you don't burn your fingers. Right. No, yeah. longer, exactly. Right? Yeah. We'll Same. probably <laughs> see something in the skies. <laughs> it's <laughs> not supposed to. A, a very warm <laughs> yeah. uh, holiday weekend too. Nice. So yeah, make those plans outdoors and uh, I like to call it Cookout weather, it's gonna be awesome cookout weather with temperatures in the 90s. Look at this shot, looking over downtown Minneapolis. It's quiet this morning, not much going on, not really even a cloud in sight for now. Looking east, maybe you could see uh, 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 some clouds as we have some fog off into northwest Wisconsin. Tips in the upper 50s and even upper 60s too in the metro, ranging anywhere between 58 to about 68 for the Twin Cities. Princeton coming in at 57, 66 later on this morning by 930 and then by 830 already in the low 70s climbing to the low 80s by mid to late morning. Next three days from 88 today down to 85 and then we start to go back up on Friday, we start warming and then we start to hit the 90s. All right, guy, thanks. Keep an eye. Uh, there was a box truck on fire. You can see the remnants of it. A lot of uh, smoke left residue left over here on the side of the box truck. Fire crews were there putting it out. So it's still there. Fires out. Uh, troopers still on the scene putting some flares down. So it's blocking that right shoulder along 394 and 94 in Minneapolis. We did get a report of another crash up near 610. I was trying to find out on traffic cameras. Uh, it doesn't seem to be popping up right now. I'll keep looking and I'll have another update coming up in a few minutes. Breaking overnight with just 18 hours until a potential government shutdown, Minnesota lawmakers now on the verge of preventing it from happening. Early this morning, they passed two major spending bills, and uh, one of them will end Governor Tim Wall's emergency COVID powers. Those bills are part of the state's two-year, nearly $52 billion state budget. It's a deal that needs to get done before midnight. Jennifer joins us from the Capitol this morning, where lawmakers will pick things back up in the matter of hours. Where does this budget deal stand right now, Jen? Yeah, so as you mentioned, lawmakers are on recess right now. They will be back in the early afternoon to continue working before their big deadline uh, coming up here. But, so let's get you updated with where things stand right now. Our wonderful John Croman was up very late last night into the early uh, morning hours here, and he made us this wonderful scorecard with, of where everything stands. So look at the far, the right column, which is in orange there. Those are the bills signed by the governor. Eight of the 12 spending bills so far. As you probably know by now, the deadline to get these done and avoid a shutdown is midnight. Wrapped up in all of this overnight, the debate over ending the governor's emergency powers. The governor had planned to end those by August 1st, but now they will be done by tomorrow. The governor uh, overnight announced uh, late last night, as lawmakers were, were debating here, uh, that he could now safely end these by July 1st uh, because he said the USDA has agreed to keep emergency food assistance coming to Minnesota. So as lawmakers were debating ending these powers, the governor came out and said, I'll end them myself July 1st tomorrow. They're done. Yeah, done earlier than expected. Thanks a lot, Jim. Also breaking overnight, lawmakers passed a controversial public safety bill, and it pays for one our courts and police. But this bill includes two new amendments. One makes it a crime to publish the home address of a police officer, and another allows judges to issue sign and release warrants, an alternative to traditional arrest warrants. 
Now time for your morning rush. A suspect in the 1986 cold case murder in Chisholm is due in court today. His attorney is trying to get evidence thrown out. Police say Michael Carville sexually assaulted and then killed 38-year-old Nancy Doherty when he was 18 years old. To make the arrest, Chisholm police paid Parabon Nanolabs, a genealogy company, to help connect Carvo's DNA to the crime. Carvo's lawyer will argue today that the prosecution needs to share how the genealogy company came to its conclusion. We are now entering seven days following this horrific collapse in the number Numbers heartbreaking. More than 140 people still unaccounted for somewhere in the rubble not too far away from where I'm standing. Champlain Tower is not only the focus of multiple investigations, but now multiple lawsuits as well. Held against her will and verbally attacked. That's how Minneapolis City Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins is describing an incident with activists. In the video posted by local activists, he accuses Jenkins of angrily confronting him, not passing legislation, and supporting the Minneapolis Police Department. The group demanded she sign her support for six demands, including the resignation of the city's mayor and dropping charges for hundreds of protesters. A local attorney says because Jenkins was under duress, the contract has no legal standing. The NWHL draft is on the clock. The Minnesota Whitecaps tapped their home state to help build their roster. They picked up Mac Lange, 6 overall, Tina Campa, 12th, and Gopher star Taylor Went in the third round. And that is your Wednesday morning rush. If you love this game, you are welcome here. That's the message the NFL is sending to LGBTQ fans on social media this morning, and it's getting some mixed reaction online. Now, this video was posted on Twitter by the NFL. It says football is gay, football is lesbian, and then continues on to list other things like football is queer, transgender, and beautiful before flashing its final message on the screen, football is for everyone. The message, a direct response to Las Vegas Raiders player Carl Nassib, who came out just last week. Now, in a video posted to Instagram, Nassib shared that he is gay and he plans to donate $100,000 to the Trevor Project, which is an organization dedicated to LGBTQ youth suicide prevention and crisis intervention. Nassib is the first active NFL player to come out as gay. The NFL, which is matching Nassib's donation, also shared a statistic from the Trevor Project that captured the attention of people around the country. LGBTQ youth who had at least one accepting adult in their lives were 40% less likely to report a suicide attempt in the past year. Reaction to this message has been mixed with people like Kevin here writing, being gay comes with hardships for football to accept me means the whole world. And a lot of people also calling out the NFL for how differently it's responded when Colin Kaepernick took a knee to protest police violence back in 2016. Like Peter's here who asked, so why isn't Kaepernick welcomed back with open arms? And with Pride Month coming to an end, we're going to be watching to see how the NFL lives up to its commitments to LGBTQ fans and players this coming football season. But yeah, it's been an interesting year to say the least for all big, you know, sports, NFL, NHL, all these mm -hmm. sports companies. Yeah, and football plays a, such a huge role in the fabric of our society. Mm -hmm. So if they're becoming more inclusive and letting they're that be known. Right. It's like important yeah. to take the stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Alicia. Guy, what's our one thing weather? Okay, one thing weather today, uh, you'll see temperatures will be in, this is not the one thing weather, you can ignore this. <laughs> Thank you. Bro, I know, I know, that's my Stinky. bad. All right, let's pull up the seven day here. Uh, I have it coming up. You'll see temperatures warming up to the 90s for Saturday, Sunday. Sunny and quiet today, less humid, 88. What's going on over there with the stink bugs? Hey, what's going on here? This stinks too. Guy Brown, traffic congestion. 94 610 you see this box trucks blocking the one lane that people are trying to get through will be uh keep an eye on this and have an update coming up a COVID shook up college life and impacted how many families can pay for it but with one door closing an opportunity emerges some students are now negotiating for more financial aid and getting it sharon epperson explains i clicked the link and it said congratulations you are a member of the fairfield class of 2025 Julia Hull was accepted to her top college choice. And what was most exciting? I had gotten into the nursing program and gotten the merit scholarship. Helping offset her $52,000 tuition as a full-time undergrad at Fairfield University. How much did it cover for the overall cost of attendance? So it covers around 30%. Even with the scholarship, the Hull family worried they may have trouble covering the rest and they did not qualify for any need-based aid. Once they make a decision to commit to a student, they'll do anything to keep that student. 
After meeting with a college funding consultant, Tom and his wife Lauren followed advice on how to officially appeal for more money. We made sure that we enclosed some of the letters of merit scholarship that she had for acceptances. We showed that we had some leverage. We asked for what I felt was a moderate appeal. We said our excitement level is very real. If you could help us in this area, that we'd be willing to commit. And it worked. How much more aid were you able to get? We got around 3% more. Before the pandemic, about one-third of appeals were successful at most schools, and the team at Princeton Review says that number has likely grown. Schools weathered some hard times in fall of 2020, but that doesn't mean they can't remain active and aggressive with a financial aid and scholarship policy for those students that are coming into classes this year. Financial aid decisions made for this incoming freshman class are based on federal income tax returns from 2019. In asking for more need-based aid, experts say be transparent about how your family's income and expenses have changed since then. Be very specific, be very to the point why you cannot afford the college you're trying to get into. I'm probably the luckiest guy in the world, you know, to get hit by the great white and to walk out of the hospital the same day. We would say so. Here why this surfer is saying thanks to the shark for taking a bite. Plus, the most dangerous day for your cell phone is almost here. What you can do to avoid paying for big repairs to your device. Then he gives us the coolest view of some iconic Minnesota spots. So straight ahead, see how this pilot gets up close and personal in this incredible drone video.